Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review, review show special. And today, I'm going to be reviewing this. This is 52 Explorations by uh, Jack Parker. It is Jack Parker's final legacy, and it's written by Andy Gladwin and published by Vanishing Inc. Uh, now, I'm so excited to be able to do this review. Uh, the book has literally just come out two days ago on Friday. It is now available to buy. I've had it for a little while. Uh, I've had it since, uh, since the session, and I just haven't been able to put this book down. What is 52 Explorations? Well, I've been on this channel many, many times and said openly that my favourite book is 52 Memories, which was a book of routines by Jack Parker, published by Andy Gladwin, shortly after uh, Jack Parker passed away. Uh, and it is my favourite book. It's full of incredibly clever card magic. Uh, not really that difficult, but very innovative plots and a very kind of different out-the-box way of approaching card magic. So when I found out that 52 Explorations was coming out, I, I was so excited because even if it's a half as good as the original book, it's going to be brilliant. And I didn't even know it was coming out. That's the thing I didn't even know. I thought 52 Memories was it. I thought that was the last book. I thought that uh, obviously Jack Parker passed away, so he's not going to be able to bring anything else out. But here we are with more Jack Parker material. Now, before I give this book a review, I want you guys to um, listen to an interview I did. I was able to catch up with Andy Gladwin. Now, if you don't know who Andy Gladwin is, Andy Gladwin is a legend. He co-founded and co-runs the Vanishing Inc. along with Joshua J. And, you know, he's an incredible performer. Uh, he's an incredible creator, uh, an incredible entrepreneur and businessman, and an incredible author and writer. Uh, I've interviewed Andy on this channel before, so if you want to find out more about Andy Gladwin, go check out that interview. It's well worth checking out. But I was able to sit down with Andy for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and talk about 52 Explorations. Now, we also talked about Jack Parker, who Jack Parker was, and how Andy and Vanishing Inc. came to actually be... Uh, in a situation where they're writing this new book and that is fascinating unfortunately jack is no longer with us and rest in peace that man was an absolute genius but luckily thanks to andy thanks to josh his legacy absolutely completely lives on and then some so uh, let's have a look at this interview first of all because andy talks about the various different routines in the book who the book is kind of aimed at. So let's listen to that interview first of all, then I'm going to bring it back into the studio and we're going to do a full uh, kind of rundown of what I think of the book. So I am super excited because I am here with the one and only legend himself, Andy Gladwin. How are you doing, Andy? You okay? I am very good. You're too kind. Thanks for having me on, Craig. I'm uh, excited to chat with you. Thanks for being here. And once again, I've said this on the channel a few times. Congratulations on the session. It was incredible. It was awesome. So, yeah, well done on that. Um, you were a big part of that. I don't know whether your viewers even know this, but um, we had a performer who had to cancel last minute. And the first person I thought of was who could step in? Of course, it's Craig. And you just jumped at, at it and you were so kind. So thank you very much for doing that. You're more than welcome. Anytime. It was, it was awesome that you asked me. But Aside from the session and everything else that you do, because Vanishing Inc. are busy. I mean, the amount of stuff that's coming out, really great stuff, is incredible. But you've always had a big focus on books, which is, which is so good to see. And we're here to talk about a new book that's literally just come out, uh, which is 52 Explorations by Jack Parker. It's the follow-up to, and I've said this over and over again on this channel, my favorite magic book of all time, 52 Memories, which is genuinely my favorite magic book. And it surprises me. When I was at the session and I was around the, the Vanishing Ink booth, people were coming up and they were looking at the 52 Memories book. And I was like, haven't you seen this? This is the greatest magic book of all time. And a lot of people haven't heard about it. So I wanted to do this review so special. Talk a bit about Jack Parker, because I know he means a lot to you. The story behind the original book and also how the new book has come to be, if that's okay. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about all of that. And yeah, you've always been a big supporter of 52 Memories. So uh, thank you very much um, for that. Um, you know why I think people don't seem to know about it all that much anymore is because it was released, I think, almost 15 years ago now, uh, which in magic book times is a long time. 
-hmm. So uh, it's been through three different four printings, three versions. So it's um, yeah, it. I'm glad to have people like you uh, fighting the corner, saying you need to buy this book because you're very kind. Well, let's let's talk about Jack Parker. Uh, just for people who don't know who he is, uh, obviously you knew him very well. I didn't. I only know him through through the books. Could you tell us a little bit about Jack and how the fifty two the original fifty two memories book came to be? Yeah, so I met Jack I think in two thousand and two, and we met online, which is kind of a weird thing, or was a weird thing back then, less so now I guess. Uh, but we both had day jobs, and we both used to go to this magic forum. It's kind of a secret magic forum called TSD, the Second Deal, and a lot of members of the Second Deal were Marlowe students. So it was very Marlowe heavy as a as a forum. Um, you had to pay to get in. You had to be invited by an existing member. So there were only maybe a hundred members or so, and there was a trick section where you could post tricks that you came up with. And this was like the who's who of you know everybody. There was tricks by. I don't know, Chad Long by, I mean, just every magician you can imagine. I won't even list them because we already know that, like, fantastic card magicians. And all of a sudden, this guy I'd never heard of, Jack Parker, posted a trick. And I read it, and I was really impressed with the construction of this trick. He just managed to squeeze so much out of just a, a few moves, and it became like an eight-phase trick of just with a, with a few moves. And then like two days later, he posted another trick. And it was a two deck trick. And I, I'm not very big on two deck tricks, as I think most people are. But this one I really liked. And then he posted another trick. And this one was a, a spelling trick, like a dealing trick with a, like a 26 card stack. And it was so different to his other stuff. I was like, who is this guy? This guy is like very multi-talented in different ways. So I started to dig around and try and find out who Jack Parker was. And turns out he lived relatively close to me. He lived in Portsmouth area, which is about three hours from me. And I thought I was pretty connected even back then. I, th I thought I knew a lot of magicians in the UK. Um, we were friends uh, back then, as we still are now. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I knew a lot of people. and I'd never heard of this guy and nor had anybody else. So I made contact with him. And we just became great friends. We used to chat all day long on AOL Instant Messenger, which shows my age. And uh, I would, I would basically spend my day uh, command tabbing between um, between apps, between Visual Studio, which is what I program in when I was, had a day job as a programmer, and AOL Instant Messenger. And we spent all day, every day, talking about magic, and it was just great. I loved it. That's amazing. Yeah. And was he part, I seem to, before the 52 Memories book, I seem to remember Jack being a part of the Magician's Cookbook. Yeah, also. so the Magician's Cookbook was Jack's book. And that was the first project we worked on together. Um, so, so Jack had some unfortunate health issues. Uh, he had leukemia when he was uh, in his kind of late teens. And he wanted to do something to give back to um, the, the hospice and the, the leukemia charities that helped him when he was a kid. So he wanted to write a magic book and donate the proceeds of that book to those charities. Uh, but so he did this by collecting tricks from some great magicians, pretty much all TSD members, actually, like Alan Ackerman, Dave Solomon, David Acker, like just the list goes on. And so he collected all these tricks and then he just realized that he wasn't a great writer of magic. He, he tried to write these tricks up and he really struggled. Um, I think he was a very analytical person. Uh, you have to be to be an architect, I think. Um, and his mind just didn't work in that way. So he asked me whether I would get on board and, and write up the tricks and put some kind of cohes cohesive format into it. Um, so yeah, Jack, Magician's Cookbook in my mind was all Jack. I was just the kind of the conduit, the, the worker to get it done. Um, and, and that was how we worked together initially. And during that project, I kept saying, like, Jack, we're going to write a book of your magic. We, you have so much great magic. Um, but he just, he wasn't into it. And, and I knew that one day he would be, but he just didn't, didn't feel like he was ready. Mm. But then and Jack had some back pains for a while. Um, and we would speak on Messenger every day. He would tell me how it's kind of getting worse. And and then he just went quiet for a few weeks and on oh, messenger he wasn't at work and i think uh he emailed me say hey i'm off work uh, I'll, I'll be back soon let's uh, let's talk soon just didn't hear from him and then he sent me an email and it's an email that i still have but i i don't think i can bring myself to go read it uh again that's along the lines of hey the back pain's worse than it than i thought it's uh, it's terminal cancer i have a couple of months to live um let's let's do the book um and you know that's that's an email that I, I didn't want to receive at all. Um, but then to tag on that, 
let's do the book like these weren't good <laughs> this wasn't a good feeling to have to write a book mm. uh, about someone's magic under those circumstances and also writing a magic book takes years uh, at least to write a good one uh, so I quit my job pretty much on the spot uh, and I spent the next two months three months I think writing uh, alongside Jack I would visit him uh, at the hospice that he was staying at I would get his feedback on all of the explanations and he had lots of feedback um, to the point where I see I recall being kind of annoyed at just how much he wanted to change uh, but he was just so obsessed with getting the details right um, so that's the story of, of 52 memories it was a, a book that was kind of forced upon us and um, and was Jack able to see the finished version of 52 memories or, no. or like almost finished version so he saw all of the tricks um in, in a write-up form you know in a word document he saw all of the illustrations and he saw the finished pdf but the book didn't make it um, back from the printers uh but the one thing i feel pretty good about is jack's dad uh, was actually the the printer uh so jack's dad printed the first edition uh, of the book uh, which kind of made me feel a little bit better about it so it was done exactly as jack wanted it and uh, you know that book we we spared no expense like the paper quality the, the the cover quality just everything just just came out exactly as I wanted to um, except for if I'm honest the illustrations for some reason that the printer had compressed the files so the illustrations just weren't perfect which is why I wanted to come back into a second version which is the the version that's available now is, is has better illustrations and because I had to rush the the writing of it there were a few typos and stuff so I went back and revisited it I guess five or six years ago and, and that's that's the version that's kind of more widely available now and and that book is incredible it's full of really practical commercial routines that are designed to be done to mm -hmm. real people but at the same time they're really clever and uh, go in a completely different direction to most of what I'd seen at that point before yeah you know I was kind of surprised when we sat down and started working out what we were going to put in this book Jack knew that he wanted 52 um, tricks it was uh, 52 memories was his title idea and you really don't know somebody's work until you you put it out in front of you where you, you get all of it I think we must have reviewed maybe 150 tricks including some unpublished stuff that I'd never seen uh some stuff that he'd sent to other magicians but but not to me uh you know loads of stuff that he sent to me I have about 200 videos that he sent me you know over AOL instant messenger and this is how long ago it was they are real movie player video format which is a wow. pretty much an extinct video format now uh, I had to uh, buy some software just to be able to open them recently um so yeah you you get a, a full understanding of someone's work when all of this is in front of you and, and what I realized was just how much of Jack's material was actually commercial material because when you're just sharing tricks back and forth that you you kind of forget about them after a couple of days of playing around with them uh, because you've moved on to the next thing but to put all of that on mass it was really exciting to see just how great Jack was as a creator in so many different styles as well. Just like I said about those first three tricks I saw him uh, publish, he just had such a, a wide array of material and he seemed to be an expert at all of those different versions and different styles of magic. Yes, awesome. And then obviously that was a commercial success. You uh, and, and really you say you quit your job at that point. Was that the start of Vanishing Ink at that point? Was that the catalyst that made you kind of go um, in some ways it was the start of a chain of events so after that I got a job in London uh managing a um uh, a team of, of designers and user interface designers uh, and then after that um that was when I so during that time in London that's when Josh came to stay with me and where the conversation of Vanishing Ink started so yeah, if, if I hadn't have written 52 Memories or published the, the cookbook, which were just my own releases, they, they the logo was Andy Gladwin Publications. Well, <laughs> um, if those hadn't have happened and I wasn't living in London at the time, then definitely Vanish Nick would have never existed. Wow. So that then brings us to 52 Explorations. Mm -hmm. Where did, because as far as I was concerned, that that was... Jack's material that was it we, we had this legacy piece of incredible card magic um so that his name would live on for years and years to come now all of a sudden we've got another book so yeah. how how did how did that come about so it's always been on the cards but 
kind of secretly. Uh, when, when Jack sent me all of this material for 52 Memories, we had so much, uh, many other tricks that we were considering. Uh, and actually what happened was we just ran out of space. We got to the 52 tricks because when you put a limit on the tricks like that, you you do, you, you just run out of space. And there was just these other tricks that Jack wanted to include that we couldn't because it would be weird to call it 60 memories or, or whatever. Uh, so Jack said, just do something with these one day, just, just publish these somehow one day. Um, because if you if you knew of Jack and followed his work back then, so 16, 17 years ago, he would put out these ebooks of just here's a collection of material. One was called Set to Stun, another Set to Kill. He had this exploration series. Uh, these ebooks are no longer available, but he that's how he would distribute his material. So in his mind, just put them out one day means hey, just you know put them in an ebook or something. You know, just do something with them. Just make sure people get them. Uh, but in my mind that's a waste. I, I never want to be just, just throwing material out because it exists. So I sat on it for a few years and thought, like, how do I do this in a, in a respectful way to Jack's legacy? Because I don't like the idea that we've, we've ramped up to 52 memories and then we go, there's a few tricks. You know, it just, it doesn't work right. Uh, there's some gimmick tricks in 52 Explorations and he said, just release these as like marketing tricks or whatever. But I didn't want that to be the case. I, I wanted to, to maintain Jack's legacy. So when I started looking at what material we had left, it, it really fell into three categories. Tricks that definitely needed to be published, which was the, the larger of the categories. Tricks that Jack had sent me that he never intended to publish. And those ones I, I wanted to, to keep away from this because I, I don't like the idea that well, when I die, it was a morbid thing to say, that, that my friends could then start cashing in on, on tricks that I'd never finished. You know, I don't want those to be my legacy. I want the tricks that I worked really hard on to finish to be my legacy. So I didn't want to do that to Jack. And then the other category was just tricks that just weren't quite up to scratch. Um, and because of the way Jack worked, th there were a lot of those. Jack would take on projects. He would take a move or a concept and he would come up with 50 different versions of those, all in wild different directions. Uh, but I just wanted to take the best one or two of those instead of uh, you know, publishing the other 18 as well. So when I did that and filtered out all the material, I had enough for a book. And coincidentally, it was close to 52. It was 45 or 46 tricks. Uh, so it felt like enough to put in the book 52 and call it 52 explorations because explorations is the series that jack put out an ebook series many years ago <clears throat> and, and i didn't have the the those extra few tricks there were a few tricks that i was just like i'm going to have to compromise here i guess if i want to do this if i want to make it 52 but i just had one last look at um the material that jack had sent me and just before he died he gave me a cd and he said this is you have all of this stuff already, but this is my backup. These are all the tricks uh, that I want to publish, and they're just on this CD. And I just happened to notice a trick I, I didn't recognize called Airborne on this um, this CD. And I was like, that's weird. And I checked back, never seen this trick. And it was one of the best open travelers I've ever seen. So then I compared everything on that CD to what I'd had. And there were like five tricks that Jack had never sent me. So I like to think that he'd hidden them in plain sight. Uh, but these <laughs> tricks were like the, the best tricks in the book. But there were no explanations for them. So I had to deconstruct all of these methods that Jack was doing to then put them in the book. But it was just enough tricks to finish off the book to get us to 52. So I like to think that was Jack's little, uh, little hidden treasure for me. Who knows whether it was? We never will know. But uh, that's how the material for the book came about. That's incredible. And, and people that are going to buy this book, the new book, uh, 52 Explanations, what type of material can they expect in there? Well, so Jack was an expert at creating tricks that are really visual, really interesting uh, in plots, uh, and really original. Um, but the big thing is that he didn't use a lot of difficult slides. Um, I, I don't believe Jack was was a technically really proficient magician. Like he was proficient is the right word to use for Jack. Jack was a great technician of the moves that he knew, which were often more basic, you know, Elmsley counts, false counts, false shuffles, uh, but he wasn't getting into second deals, bottom deals, Greek deals, those kind of things. It's actually, I would say, intermediate at, at the most difficult level. So the material is, is very accessible. There are very few tricks in either of his books that would take uh, more than a couple of hours of practice. Uh, if anything, they just take more memory of working through some of the sequences. Um, but the stuff is, is really visual. Uh, I'm going to give you a tip of one of my favorite tricks. 
in the book. It's uh, it's called Insomnia. And this is the best, you're going to love this trick, I think, Craig, actually. Uh, it's the, the best seven card assembly ever published by a long, long, long way. Oh. Um, but it's so no difficult slides, but it will fool everyone you show it to. It's like three phases, maybe in four phases, and it's just killer. Um, but then there's some commercial stuff, like Final Palm is an open travelers that is just killer. Um, there are, yeah, it's it's a really interesting book because it's diverse in, in clever ideas, new plots, and, and commercial routines. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Wow. So it's it's just come out through um, Vanishing Ink, so it's available to buy now worldwide. It's on the site. Mm -hmm. So question, before we wrap this up and I take it back into the studio to do a review, are, are there any other books coming up from Vanishing Ink? Because one of the things that's always, and I don't, don't give anything away, but one of the things that's always defined you guys over and above everyone else, almost like a USP, is it's not just about the physical products or the downloads, it's also about the written and, and the really nice books. And, and we've just had a double hitter, really. We've just had Talk About Tricks, mm -hmm. which is insanely mammoth. Yeah. And, 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 then, and then 52 Explorations. Is there something else coming up towards the end of the year? or So 52 Memories also came out. We reprinted it. I actually have it here on my desk because I was just rereading it the other day. Um, so we redid that as well because that was out of print now for the third time. Um, but yeah, there are a few books coming out. Uh, let me think, because the, the downside of my job is I'm always working six months ahead because of the shipping process. So what does it print right now? So right now we have a book by Jean-Pierre Valerino that is uh, his like legacy book, his 52 explorations, if, if you like, um, that contains, I don't know, 60, 70 tricks written by John Lovick. It's a big, thick book. So with hundreds and hundreds of photos. So that's going to be really great. Uh, we have uh, a book on the science of magic, which is fascinating to me. Uh, I've read this book, I think, three times during the editing process. Um, and it's it's by a team of scientists who have really analyzed magic. What makes magic work? What what fools people? How, how do the eyes watch magic? And, and so there's a chance that this book could be a really groundbreaking book because while magic is an art, it's, there's also science to it, right? And if we start digging into the science of it, I think we can start really pushing it further. So to me, this is the most exciting part of magic right now is that we're able to test what a magic trick is. We're able to take a, a magic idea and turn it into a genuine theory, not just a, a, a concept that might might be true or false. So, um, so I'm uh, yeah, I'm proud to be involved in that book. That's just the start, though. I mean, Craig, I am nonstop working on books right now. Every day I'm dealing with printers on, on books. So uh, we have many more to come, I promise you. That's amazing. Well, I am super excited. And I've said it on the channel before. I'll say it again. Congratulations to all the success that you and the rest of the Vanishing, team, Vanishing Ink team have had. Congratulations on the retreat, on the conventions, Magic Fest, the session, all the releases it's it's just mind-blowing what you've achieved in such a short period of time is nothing short of just inspirational so oh, congratulations you're very kind thank you very much um you know what we should do um i, I haven't checked with you whether you're cool with this um but it's i believe there is a little vanished ink master class coming up in december by someone pretty cool who is it craig uh that would be that would be me yes and we've not actually said anything to anybody at this point but uh I've been wanting to work with Vanishing Ink for as long back as I can remember. This is a dream come true to get to work with you guys and and be a part of the masterclass. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. I'm excited to work with you on it. So, uh, yeah, I hope you're I'm team putting team. the material together now. It's all completely unique and unpublished. Never seen before. Only the only place you'll be able to see this stuff is on my masterclass. Which means we get to spend three, uh, three Sundays together uh, in December. So what more do you need? even better exactly uh, well thanks for having me on this and, and i'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on 52 explorations in your review and uh if you perform a trick i'm uh, i'm looking forward to seeing which one you do i will indeed andy and thank you once again i'm sure i'll see you again soon but uh thanks for jumping on the channel thanks craig thanks everyone bye bye so once again, thank you, Andy Gladwin, for finding the time in your busy schedule to do that interview. Uh, I'll say the same thing that I always say. This is going to be a completely unbiased review, even though I consider Andy a friend. Uh, this is a completely unbiased review. However, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I love this book. So as Andy said in the interview, this is another collection 
of Routines by Jack Parker. And you can tell that this means something to uh, to Andy. The, the, the book is laid out beautifully. You know, I always thought Andy was a good writer, but he just gets better and better and better. It really does. The layout is amazing. Uh, in an in a era of books, where there's a lot of books that are coming out these days with typos and problems, this is just lovingly put together with no issues whatsoever. Uh, the, the illustrations are great. I mean, superb. Uh, they are very clear. Everything is very clearly taught and there's no problems at all. So I know that there's people out there that are visual learners that find it hard to, um, uh, to learn from a book. There's certain routines that if you don't learn them from a book, you're never going to learn them. It's not like Jack Barker is going to film a download of some of the material in this book. So the only way you're going to be able to learn the stuff that's in here is by buying the book. And that's something that you really should consider because already I've, I've learned about seven or eight routines in this book and I will be learning more. I absolutely will be learning more. Uh, in fact, look on Magic Lives over the coming weeks and months and you're gonna see a whole bunch of Jack Parker material going on there. Um, so let's let's talk about the content. It's broken down into various different uh, various different sections. Uh, there's sections on Move Like Parker, there's sections on gimmicks where he does routines with gimmick cards, uh, there's sections on aces and ace assemblies. Uh, it, there's so many different sections and it's broken down really easily and really nicely to understand, which is good. But I want to tell you a little bit about why I think this material is so good. Uh, I never knew Jack Parker myself, however, from reading his books, I realise that he's the sort of man that likes doing what I do, which is taking a particular plot or a particular idea in magic and just like trying to squeeze every little bit of opportunities out of it. So when you talk about ace assemblers, he's got like a whole bunch of different routines with ace assemblers. And you might stop, you're, you know, it's true what Andy said, there's a routine in here called Insomnia, which is one of the best seven card ace assemblers, if not the best eight, uh, seven card ace assembly I've ever seen. And you might think, well, you know what, Chuck's gonna stop right there. He's created, you know, the definitive version of this plot. I'm gonna stop right there, but he doesn't. He then goes off and, off and creates a whole bunch of other stuff as well that are just as good, but in a different way. He doesn't tether his creativity. He doesn't stop uh, creating. And the stuff that he puts together solves problems that sometimes you're not even aware exists. And I'm gonna illustrate that by showing you a particular routine, which is called Final Palm. And it's called Final Palm because it's one of Jack's last routines that he ever created. And it's based on the open travelers or the invisible palm aces, whichever way you want to look at it. And what it is, if you don't know what invisible palm aces is, basically, or open travelers, the basic idea is that you have four kings, for example, and one at a time, you, you make the kings vanish and you make them appear uh, somewhere else by palming them invisibly, showing it's in an invisible palm, and then reappearing them somewhere else. It's a classic routine. There are a few problems inherent with that trick. And one of the problems is uh, you need a table, obviously. You need a table service or something in order to be able to do it. Uh, you also uh, ideally need a close-up pad. And, and then one of the other problems is the final phase is never as strong as the others. Because of how the routine is constructed that you want ahead, um, you have to always go back to the deck for the final phase, and it's never as strong. Well, Jack has solved all of those problems, in my opinion, and made it way more interesting by actually using the, the deck of cards to do the routine. So rather than doing it as the typical routine of four kings are going to travel one at a time from here to here, it's more of a case of, well, let me show you how gambler's cheap. There's a few techniques you need to know. If the card's on top of the deck, you palm it like this. And with audience management, I've been playing around with this, with the right audience management, it is very easy to have the spectators hold a deck of cards. So now you're in a, a situation where you've got a regular pack of cards, you just take out four kings, and you can do an incredible version of Open Travelers using uh, the techniques that Jack teaches. And he's added a, a kicker to it as well. So rather than being kind of a bit anticlimactic, because what's happened is, you know, they expect the final king to go over because at that point they know what you're going to be doing because you've done it three other times. Just when you think you know what's going on, there's a complete kicker ending out in the blue that you just don't you don't see coming. So let's have a look at that routine. I'm going to perform that for you right now. 
and uh, and you can see exactly why I think that particular routine is so good. Would you like to know how to cheat at cards? Uh, yeah, I'm but not on film. I'm genuinely <laughs> going to teach you the three techniques that you need to learn in order to cheat at cards. Does that sound okay? Yeah, go for it. And we're going to use the four kings for this. One, two, three, four. And I need you to pick a card as well. So reach in and grab a card, any card you want to, not one of the kings, obviously. And when you've got the card, do me a favor, show everybody, but do not show me. Have you got it? Yeah. Now, that's going to become important later on. This is not a card trick where you pick a card and I find it. It's uh, a little bit different. We're going to get back to that card a little bit later on, okay? Okay. The important thing are the kings, because I'm actually going to be using the kings to show you the three techniques that you need to cheat at cards. And the, the, the techniques are kind of similar, but also different. So uh, we've got the, uh, the king of spades, that's that one. We've got the, uh, the king of clubs, that's that one. That would be the king of diamonds. And finally, the king of hearts, right? Yeah. So let me show you how this is going to work. In a game, you're holding a hand of cards, right? Yes. And the deck is somewhere off to one side. The first thing that you need to learn is how to palm a card in your hand. Now, palming a card basically is, is holding a card secretly in your hand like this. That's what, now you don't want to let go because it's going to drop out and people will see how it works. But basically, that's what palming a card is. Okay. Now, the problem is, if you're not careful, a lot of people will see you palming a card in your hand. So you have to learn a technique called the invisible palm. And we'll use the king of diamonds to show you how this works, okay? So I'll put the, uh, the king of diamonds right there, okay? Uh, leaves the king of hearts on top. Are you ready for this? Yeah. I'm going to show you how this works. Watch. Let's say that I needed that king in my hand. What I'd do is I'd rest my hand on the, uh, the deck just for a second and I'd take that king out. Now the problem is you might think that I've done something so I'd then shift it into an invisible palm. See it's there, you just can't see it. When it's in an invisible palm, I'd put it back here and then it would be there, and that's how the technique works, right? <laughs> See, it's not, it's not there, and it's now over there, right? That's how the technique works. Let me show you that again, because maybe you missed it. This is an important technique to learn when you're, when you're learning this stuff. So you put the king on top. Obviously, that leaves the king of hearts here. You just wait a second. You hold your hand. You do this. You transfer it into an invisible palm. You then put it over there, and that's how you get the card in your hand. That's it. Oh, hang on. Takes a second sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you, you also need to be able to do this in reverse. Let me show you what I mean. I'll use a different king. You need to be able to do this in reverse, right? So uh, sometimes I might need to get a card out of my hand and burn it into the deck without you realizing it. So you're going to use the invisible palm in the other direction. Now, sometimes if you're bringing your hand over the cards, people might see, there might be something. So what you can do is you can put the card under your hand like this. Don't worry about these three. You can put the card under your hand. You can then shift it into an invisible palm. With your thumb, you can kick it over there. It bounces off the table onto the deck and it looks something like that. Right, following this? I'm trying to teach you. No. <laughs> now, <clears throat> there is one other technique that you need to learn as well. There is one other technique. And this is kind of advanced. So when you've learned those two techniques, you can learn this one. Right? And it's called a switch. See, here's how this one works. You take one of the kings and you put it underneath. Oh, let me get it right. This is very difficult to do. You take one of the kings and you put it under your hand. Now, don't worry about this king. Don't worry about this thing. Don't worry about this king. Sometimes you might want to switch a card sequently for another card in the deck. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that would look like this. It doesn't look like I've done anything. But I've actually switched that card, that king, for another card in the deck. Which is why, earlier on, I got you to pick a card. Because that's proof that the switch <gasps> worked. Oh my god. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love that. Now, um, you notice that I had a card picked at the beginning. What Andy and Jack talk about in the book is the best thing to do is to finish another routine where you've found a selected card and then go into this particular routine. And then the selected card that you found uh, ends up reappearing back you know, as, as the finale to the trick. So it's not like you're picking a card as part of this routine. 
the card has come from a previous routine that they might have picked absolutely ages ago. I even thought you could extend that idea and you could have a, you know, maybe a torn and restored something where the card gets torn up for some reason uh, and thrown away and at the end it comes back. There's a lot of different options with that, but it's just a really beautiful sequence. Now, I want to, I want to perform one other one for you because I do think that this illustrates um, uh, Jack's approach to, uh, to card magic. And uh, this is the first chapter, if you buy this book, chapter one, Profusion. Now, Profusion is a really interesting concept. And what it allows you to do is it's a really nice sequence using uh, a very simple count that most people know. And what the sequence allows you to do is make four kings appear from between, say, for example, three jokers in a really cool way. They appear one at a time and then the finale... I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, tip it for you. I want you to watch the performance in a second. But when I first read this, I mean, wow! Talk about setting the bar right, uh, setting the bar high. You look at chapter one and you see this, and you go, "Well, okay, now we've peaked. We didn't peak, not by any stretch of the imagination." But just what reading this first chapter shows you what you can do with this. Now, the routine I'm going to do for you is the very first routine in the book. It's called Court Jesters, right? And it uses this profusion concept. According to Andy, uh, profusion has been explored by uh, Thomas Blumberg as well. Uh, Thomas and um, uh, Jack were part of the Second Deal website and kind of had the same idea at the same time and went in different directions with it. Um, what What Jack has done here is nothing short of amazing. Now, you're going to see the basic routine with this, but it gets crazy good. Uh, some of the, once you understand the basic profusion concept, you can then go in a completely different direction with this. There's routines where, uh, you know, you, you take three selected cards, they pick one, uh, you, you well, I, I don't even want to give too much away. Uh, it's, it's an incredible idea, it really is. So you learn the original routine and then you can go into all the different variations of it. I think there's like uh, five variations. Four variations. Now I'm doing the original uh, Court Jesters, which is the first routine in the book. I've thrown a bit of Equivoking at the beginning though, and you'll see why when you watch the performance. I've, um, I, that's just my little addition to it. I've just thrown a little bit of Equivoking at the beginning, um, uh, just to apparently give people a free choice of the, the cards that are going to be picked. But I'm going to perform this for you. This is Court Jesters from Jack Parker's 52 Final Explorations. Um, there's a technique in magic that I've been learning. And it's a really cool, Another one. a really cool technique, okay. and it allows you to make cards appear. Would you like to see that technique? Okay, Go let for me it. show you. I'm going to take three jokers out of this deck. Now I know that sounds crazy, um, but I actually carry three jokers since I learned this technique. I've started putting three jokers, not two, in every single deck of cards, purely because it allows me to do this. Because this is the coolest thing you'll ever see. And you can do it yourself, you just need three jokers. Now, before I start, do you want to give the cards a shuffle? You can do if you want, or you can trust me. No, you don't trust me. Okay. Why would I trust you? I've met you before. I feel like the trust is gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're a magician, the trust was never there. <laughs> it's never there. <laughs> right, very right nice. Your shuffling's getting good, Dharma. You yeah. think? Yeah. 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 Might have been practicing it's, a little it's bit. Get, it's gone from total shit to sucks. Oh, that's good. Well, that's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. So uh, we got uh, three jokers. That's joker number one, joker number two, and... Joker number three. No, Bob. But it's fine. Bob? Bob. Oh, okay. Bob and joker. One, two, and Bob. One, two, and Bob. Joker number one, joker number two, and Bob. Anyway, we're going to use these three jokers to show you something amazing. All right, I'm going to show you something absolutely incredible. We're going to try and... Um, I, I'm going to use your imagination. So I want you to imagine that we've got an invisible deck of cards. Okay. And I want you to imagine that you reach in and you remove either the picture cards or the number cards. Which ones do you remove, the pictures or the numbers? Numbers. Okay, so that leaves you the picture cards, yeah? Yeah. You've got the jacks, you've got three piles, the jacks, the queens, and the kings. With your left hand, pick up a pile. In your imagination, with your left hand, pick up either the jacks, queens, or kings. Do it. Actually, reach oh. out and do it. Which ones have you got? Queens. Queens. And with your left hand, pick up a pile. That is my left hand. Oh, sorry, with your right hand, pick up, <laughs> pick up one of the other piles. Which one have you got? Kings. So you've got the queens and the kings. Yeah. One final decision. When I snap my fingers, hand me either the kings or the queens. Which ones have you handed me? Queens. So that leaves you with the kings, kings right? And that's a free choice. You yeah. can keep those kings as a souvenir. Oh, thanks very so exciting. much. That's okay. Now, what I want you to do, don't get your kings confused with the rest of my cards. Keep them separate. But I want you to cut the deck into four piles. Can you do that for me? Dun, dun, dun. Four piles. 
No, not the kings. They're invisible. You can put those away now. You don't need oh. those anymore. I just wanted to use your imagination to work out what cards we were going to use. We're gotcha. using the kings. Now take the real deck and cut it into four piles. I love that you you literally um, put the invisible kings in your way in your pocket. That was so nice. I'm an actor. It was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. I was very impressed. You know, a packet tends to be more than one card, else it's a card. Uh, yeah. You just want one card. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's my fault. I shouldn't have picked you. Um, but whatever. So you wanted the kings, right? Watch this. Yeah. If I give a little twist with my three jokers, what happens is one card appears face up in between them, and that's a king. Oh, shit. I'll put that on packet number one. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Once you give it a little <laughs> twist, and now we get a second thing <gasps> appearing. No way. Yeah, right. And this one here goes right there on packet number two, which is actually a real packet. Give it a little twist. Let's see if I can do it again. We get one, two, three. There. Isn't that cool? That goes right there on packet number three. The last one is the hardest one. Do you know why? You can't make that last king appear. You have to do real magic. And real magic looks like this. You take the three jokers and you do this. And the three jokers change into the final king. What the? F no that way! <laughs> is the four king trick? And I think it's four king good. good. What are you looking for? The jokers. Where did they go? They're, they're, they're. That's not a joker, though. No, is it? no. But I fused the three jokers into a king. Which is impossible. But possible because that's where it is. Is it real? Yeah, it's real. There you go. How cool is that? How cool is that? I love that routine. I can see myself doing that an awful lot. I do a lot of four of a kind routines and having the ability to just go through the deck. And I love the practicality of that. Just like all of Jack's material, it's commercial, it's practical. It is not pipe dreams. You know, I love reading books with complicated card magic. I really do. I love reading books with complicated coin magic. And it's a hobby to sit there and just you know, try and get my finger positioning right and try and work on these really complicated moves. But what we have here is a collection of tricks that are designed to be shown to real people. These are routines that will inspire you to create your own magic. And that is a perfect example. I love the idea of just having a deck of cards shuffled and saying, hey, do you know I actually keep three, three, I actually keep three jokers in this deck. Do you want to know why I keep three jokers in this deck? Let me show you. Let me just go and take them out. Look, I've got these three jokers. Boom, you're into it. An amazing four of a kind production. And then you're into whatever routine you want to go into. If it was just a download with those two routines that I just performed for you, I would be over the moon happy. But what we have here are 52 incredible pieces of card magic. What we have here is the final legacy of Jack Parker. And what we have here is a book that deserves to be in every single person's library. If you are not a book fan, buy this. If you are a book fan, buy this. If you've never heard of Jack Parker, buy this and buy 52 Memories. If you do know Jack Parker and you've got 52 Memories, hell to the yes, buy this. Either way, you really should be buying this book because it is incredible. And anybody who likes good card magic will get so much out of it. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad I got this just before summer because I know what I'm going to spend the rest of my summer doing. I'm working on rabbits right now. Damn, rabbits is good. I couldn't perform it for you because it needs some stickers and I'm waiting for them from Amazon. I didn't have them. But rabbits might be one of the best tricks that I've ever seen. I mean, oh my gosh. Let me just read rabbits to you very quickly. Jack has a card selected and then sticks two stickers to its back. One with his initials and another with the participants' initials. He makes a strange claim that the stickers are rabbits. And then, without any funny movements or switches, he takes the selection and holds it face up for the moment. Uh, we'll give the rabbits some uh, privacy, he jokes. And we all know what happen when happens when rabbits get privacy. He turns the card over and shows that the card is now covered in little baby stickers surrounding the two larger stickers. Oh my gosh. You want to talk about card magic? that is commercial uh, card magic for kids. That, that's that trick. I cannot wait for my stickers to arrive. I'm so frustrated that they're not here yet because I'm gonna be performing the hell out of that. That is, you know, like you go to a wedding 
and there's kids there and you want to do something that's going to impress the adults but really kind of get the kids on side as well that is absolutely awesome and a great giveaway to a kid you can make a ton of them up really quickly and it's just incredible look out for a performance of that and also if you're one of these guys that and i don't but i know a lot of people do perform sponge bunnies and uh, you know you do the class ryland does sponge bunnies for example and you do the classic sponge bunny routine what a great way to siege from card tricks into coin into sponge uh, sponge bunnies you know you've done some card tricks you do this and then you give them that card and you go well actually you know the, the stick is obviously not a real bunny would you like to see what a real bunny looks like boom you're into it job done just a collection of great routines this is getting 150 percent this is the best book that's come out this year uh this is probably the best book that's come out in the last couple of years and i've read some amazing books i'm currently reading offbeat by nick uh, Del Fanti, and that's a great book and it's going to be getting reviewed soon but I'm sorry this is better this is just incredible F chocked full of incredible working card material it's getting 150 percent and my advice is to go and buy it before what will ultimately always happens a vanishing ink run out and then you have to either wait for another run or fingers crossed you hope that you get another run so there you go, guys. That's another review show special in the bag. Thanks once again for joining me right here on Magic TV and finding more out about 52 Explorations. My hat is off to the Vanishing Ink team, especially to Andy Gladwin, for treating Jack Parker's material with so much respect and helping him deliver a legacy to the magic community that will live on together that uh, forever. And, you know, the stuff that uh, Andy and Josh are doing at Vanishing Ink with... Uh, you know, their youth programs and their action against piracy and stuff like this is really setting them apart at the moment. So well done, Vanishing Ink. Seriously, well done. Um, you want to see more videos like this? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you haven't already done so, please go check out the Netflix. I get people all the time asking how they can support the channel. Try the Netflix out for a month and see what you think. I'm so proud of what we're doing. I have been spending the last two weeks coding a whole bunch more stuff. We've got some more features going on soon. It's incredible. And every two weeks, we've never missed an upload. Every two weeks, we upload five more tricks. Got another, uh, we've got another five coming up on Monday, including... Uh, um, uh, the way that I actually open uh, when I do coin magic with a purse. This is my opening coin production with a purse. So that's going up on Monday. Check out that if you're a Netrix user. And uh, if you're not, go check out www.thenetrix.com. And I will be back again soon right here on Magic TV. Thank you once again for joining me.